Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson. And in today's lesson, we're gonna be covering PLC construction. So, as I said before, as an automation engineer, it is very important for you to understand the buildup of the architecture from instrumentation, field networks, control. And on the control level, you're just gonna look at the PLC hardware, i.e. the PLC construction. This is a general construction of a PLC and the general construction of a PLC is in the is in the rack configuration as drawn here in this example. This is just a general example of how a typical PLC rack would look like. So on the first rack of the PLC that you'll have, that will contain the CPU. And the rack that has the CPU is usually called the main local or CPU rack. And this is the first rack that you get on your PLC construction. So this is where everything begins. So the rack of your PLC will consist of a certain number of slots. The number of slots that you'd have in a rack is can be dependent on the manufacturer as well as the size of the racks that the manufacturer supplies for that particular PLC. And each slot on the rack will usually be labeled. You'll have your slot 0, slot 1, slot 2, slot 3, slot 4 up to the to the last up to n slots which is dependent on the number of on the number of slots that that particular cpu rack will have and the slots that's where you would then slot in your plc cards so when you buy a plc rack usually the rack will come empty and you then need to buy the cards separate that you are going to slot into your rack and the the types of cards that are available for a plc i'm going to go into them on a later video but for now we'll just stick to this example so the so the rack that has the the cpu is usually called the main local or cpu rack this is the first rack that you get on your on your plc so let us go through what you would usually get on a plc rack so the first device or the first component that you get on the first slot of your of your PLC rack is usually the power supply. Now I must emphasize this that the order in which you can have the cards on the rack may change with um, with different manufacturers as well. Some manufacturers are strict in terms of where you put particular cards on a PLC rack. Some manufacturers do not have specific rules of, of where you can put the cards. But I've just gone with the general general example or a usual industrial convention of how you would set up your PLC rack. So the first card that you would have is the power supply and the power supply usually would require a 220 VAC supply and this is dependent on your mains power supply or the rating of the power supply what it needs. And the function of the power supply is to power up all the other cards that are on that rack where this power supply is mounted. Usually the slot number Number for the power supply is slot zero because it is the first one on the PLC rack and it usually does nothing from a control perspective. Then the second card that you would get is the CPU which is the central processing unit. So when you program your PLC the program will, will sit here in your CPU and the CPU then controls everything that is going on on the PLC. Then the second card that you would get is a comms card. Uh, I'll also go into the details of the types of comms card that you can get because from, from the times that PLC were made the technology has has improved quite significantly but in other industries you'd find that they still have the old communication cards and but the concept is the same in terms of what these cards do then after that you'll typically have your your io cards in this example on this slot which is slot number three i put in the digital input card then you can have a digital output card an analog input card as well as a analog output card i'm going to go into the details of what these cards do and all of the cards in this rack do in a separate video and then afterwards you can have other cards this could be like non non-conventional cards that you'd have on your plc if, if there are particular devices that you want to control or interface with your plc but usually this is how you'd find a, a plc rack and this is how you'd find your main rack if you are working in a factory the one way that you always identify your your main rack is the cpu so this would be the rack that will have your your cpu so now the fact that there, there is something called a main rack, it means that we also have another type of, of rack in our PLC construction and that is called the remote rack. Why is that necessary? So you'd need remote racks because if you, you run out of space on your main rack, you need to 
have your IO being interfaced with the PLC on another rack. And that's usually why you'd have then another remote rack but then that remote rack must then be able to transfer the signals to and from the CPU. Also as well, if you have IO that is located very far away where you have your main rack, you'll also want to have a remote rack in that area that collects information from the IO in that area. And then the PLC remote rack will then transfer those signals to the CPU.